Hello and welcome to a save I'm going to be doing on Football Manager 2021 with La Havre. Now I've been playing the game for a number of years now. It used to be quite awful to begin with, but last year really started to understand it. It was rather successful. So we're giving it a go on Football Manager 2021. I have the game, I have the beta. And as I said, yeah, we'll be starting with La Havre in France. Now, I'm sure maybe not all of you know too much about them. So I decided I'd give you a brief little history of the club here. So founded in 1872 as an athletics and rugby club, La Havre, the oldest French football club. The Normandy-based club play their games at Stade Ocean, which you can see in the background. The club is famous for its notable youth investment programme, which develops and nurtures young talent, and a vast amount of good young talent has come from this programme, and they've gone on to make impact at the international level, including people like Benjamin Mendy, Jalan Boomsong, Lasana Diara, Steve Mandanda, Dimitri Payet, and the two included in the thumbnail. Paul Pogba and Riyad Mahrez. Al Havre have yet to win the current first division of French football, Liga, but have participated in the league 24 times, its last stint being during the 2008-2009 oh, season, in which they finished bottom of the table in 20th, thus heading straight back down to League 2, a league that they have won five times in their history. The club's highest honour to date was winning the Coupe de France in 1959. Currently still sitting in France's second division, Al Havre have been a top half side in the league for a number of years now, haven't been able to go that extra mile and earn themselves a return to the top league in French football. The task ahead of us is with the help of their high-level youth facilities to make a return to Ligue 1 and solidify a place in the top tier of French football before looking to win their first trophy other than the Ligue 2 title since 1959, maybe go as far as making their first ventures into European football and winning their first Ligue 1 title in their history. So you have the screen confirming us as manager. You can see I'm only 20 years old, although I finally have got my age on this game. I've always been too young for it before. But yeah, if some of these um, screenshots, because some of these will be still images, are not of good quality, that is my bad. It's a way I've tried to do it, and I may try and improve it in the future if it is that awful. You see just a brief background there, stuff I've said, including like their great youth facilities, the stadium there, of a decent capacity, and the trophies they've won in the past. You can see here the objectives they sent us, really nice objectives to be managing a football manager side with. Work within wage budget is fine. Only finishing kind of top half and things like that in this season is like absolutely fine as well with the intent of getting into the French League within the upcoming years. But most importantly, those long-term objectives of becoming self-sustainable and retaining or gaining the best youth system in France, which is just lovely stuff to see as a manager on this game. And the brief thing of the squad there, you've got a lot of three and a half and three star players there, various ages as well. We've got some of these young players already in the squad all the way up to your kind of mid thirties. So it's a nice spread generally, but this is an example here of what I'm talking about. This is the second team, which has many people capable of getting to four and even five star. And the under 19s continues in that same vein, as you can see a load of four star potentials, four and a half, and a couple fives at the top. So yeah, they won't lie about the youth facilities, they're really well classed. You can see here the squad that I've just set out briefly. Not bad little spread as I said, of a lot of three and a half, threes, even a four at left back there in Merez. So we should have a good chance at doing well in this league to begin with and you can see the setup, I've put them in here, it's a 4 3 3 DM wide, so it's a lovely connection between the midfield three there, the fullbacks are encouraged to go forward as wing back and just really yeah, try and put his wing players, you can see, just trying to overload those channels to begin with, with work and help from the wingers looking at their on Russian fullbacks, maybe cutting inside, delivering balls to the strikers, they've got a load of choices with the fullback getting as high as they are for our striker to finish. See, the transfer budget and wage budget aren't overly impressive, they're fine. I mean, if I want to make a signing or two, maybe I can squeeze one in, but as you see, there's a lot at the club available to us to be able to succeed. You can also see the coaching staff here has run a bit thin, so I will, in the upcoming weeks, kind of flesh it out a bit and fill it more. I am going to run that the same lineup you saw there for the first game, first friendly here which will be against Stade Brest, who I believe are a French first division side. You can see names like Steve Mounier that you might know up front for him if you've been following Premier League within the last five years. He was at Huddersfield, part of their team that did fail to stay up. A rather awful attempt at staying up, almost matched the worst Premier League season, which was from Derby in 2008. Remember that, because I've back them popular in the Premier League when I was obviously a lot more paying attention to what was going on. I mean, I'll say that like I'm not paying attention now, of course I am. But especially when it comes to relegation zones and stuff, I was definitely giving an eye on Derby. Although 2008, Pompey were a very good side. That is, of course, when we won the FA Cup. And finished top half as well. Obviously, then managed to play in European football. 
the season prior, but that's enough about Pompa. We are here for the half. As you can see, the match engine does look a lot different to last year if you did play it. The setup is all changed, but I, I mean, I am a fan of it to be fair. It is rather nice. I've also added, as you can see on these stats, XG, which will be something that maybe does make you a bit more confident when your side's winning, you should be winning. Is the evidence will be there, but there are times, trust me, I've played a lot with um, my friend Tobe on our shared save, I'm Napoli, he's AC Milan, and sometimes that XG can make it seem like you've done a robbery or you've been robbed, and it just can kind of rub it in a bit more in those games where you feel like you've had all the shots and still come out of the draw and sometimes even a loss. But it's here regardless. You can see early signs here. We do manage to get across the back post, and Abdeli, I believe is Moroccan, one of the younger players in the side, not one of the highest overalls. I think he is only a three-star at the moment, but a lot of potential in him. You see, we get it down the left to Mere. He does throw a lovely ball towards the back post that Abdelli climbs over his full back to head in. So a decent start against our opposition side in the friendly. It used to always be a thing in the old games that your interest squad friendly would come first. I believe they try and put it in where it's best. If you're already kind of schedule friendly, so... Um, I think it is going to be like our third or fourth friendly in this, which is a bit different, but I guess it's the way it is now. The little team talk there, the team talks have also changed a little bit. There's no longer kind of how you say it assertively or cautiously, whatever it be, and more that the assertiveness, cautiousness, happiness is kind of expressed in the gesture. As you can see, there's things like throw water pot, which is obviously aggressive, and then there's outstretched arms kind of parading to your squad that they've done well. Make a couple, I think it was three, not a couple, changes at half time to get a few fresh legs, people that maybe weren't performing too well. We slip Abdelli in there again and a lovely finish to the far post. I mean, if you can keep this goal scoring up when it comes to league games, that'll be great. I've always really had a problem goal scoring on previous games with anyone but my striker, really. I could used to also actually score really well with centre backs on set pieces. I did find a few things online that made that a lot easier. But if we can get the wingers scoring, that'd be great. And the one I said I've been doing on all with Toe, but it's Napoli. Most of my goals have come from strikers, and Osserman's been getting, I think he's in the teens now. Um, but Insigne have managed to chip in a little bit for me, which is much improved from last year. As I said, it used to pretty much be a strikers only. I'm not exactly sure where they've called the offside in that, whether it's the initial ball or they someone may be afflicted, and I'm not sure. But regardless, we'll take a disallowed goal. As they have another chance here, I think it just goes over the bar, skims it. The goal kick to us. This game peters out, it's looking like we will win it. A couple of decent performances, you can see Abdelli with both goals. Um, even Ben Mohamed's had a nice little cameo from the bench. I'm trying to make a couple last minute subs, I think I do make one at right back. It's kind of now that I realise the depth in this squad's maybe not completely loaded as I sub Cooley Bally's on at both fullbacks. Um, yeah, I think I looked at making changes in midfield here, realised I haven't really got the depth for that best other CDMs you can see are the centre mid starting and then there are none. So I may look at either bringing someone in or seeing if there are CDMs or centre mids in the youth. I mean with the amount of four, four and a half, five star potential players in there, a few of them must be in there. There is one who I've just subbed on there up front, the Alan Gomez. I'm not sure if I just did it there, not half time. I mean, he is 17 or 18 and they told me, yeah, get him in the squad right away because that man is full to the prim with potential. And if he can start up front for us in the upcoming years and score a load of goals and he could become the legend of this save at La Havre. But yeah, this game starts to peter out into the last five minutes here. A 2-0 friendly win would be nice to begin with, you said with only two shots on target. You can see the XG there, it looks like obviously I've robbed them. I'm not sure if that is meant to be presented as a robbery or it just looks that way, I'm not sure, as I said. But, you know, as you say, a great start against higher opposition in the friendly. Maybe this formation will work, we'll see in the upcoming friendlies if it does manage to hold its own. The team seems to love me, team talk. Anyway, this is how I'm going to start it. So if this is even like slightly replicate something you might be interested in, please stick around. I will try and make it better. Maybe improve the quality of those screenshots if they do appear a bit shoddy. Maybe do more of it videoed so that it's high quality. The videos do come out a lot better. Maybe throw my face in there or some live games in there in the future. But I am a novice at all this. I'm not quite mastered how to do it all. I've only just found something to record my screen on the computer. But yeah, if you did or were even remotely interested, stick around to see what we can do with Le Havre. As I said, hopefully run French football. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.